Hello and welcome to Virtual Service Catalog. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and configure Virtual Service Catalog and Identity and Access Manager. So the first obvious question is, what are these features and what do they do? Virtual Service Catalog provides a central repository for viewing and sharing virtual services. From a single dashboard, you can quickly view the available services that are deployed to a VSE in your enterprise. That means that teams across your organization can use this feature to find and leverage existing services, which reduces the overhead of creating and maintaining new virtual services if there's already an existing service that will meet their needs. Identity and Access Manager, on the other hand, is the component that provides user authentication for Virtual Service Catalog, and it lets you manage users and sessions. What this means is that before you can use Virtual Service Catalog, you must create users with the appropriate permissions in Identity and Access Manager. It also means that Identity and Access Manager must be running before users can access Virtual Service Catalog. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps that get all this set up and working. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to download and run the installer. And then I'm going to talk about adding and managing users. And lastly, I'll configure Virtual Service Catalog to point to the proper instance of Identity and Access Manager. So let's start with the first step of downloading and running the installer. Virtual Service Catalog and Identity and Access Manager are both included in the same installer, but this is a separate install from DevTest Solutions. You can download the installer just like you download your service virtualization installer from the download management page at support.ca.com. In fact, it's just listed as an additional file under CA Service Virtualization. The install itself is pretty straightforward, but let's walk through it real quick. When you launch the installer, the first step that shows up is the welcome screen. So on this step, just click Next. And next, you're prompted to accept the terms of the license agreement. And to do that, you need to scroll to the bottom of the agreement, click I Accept, and then click Next. And then you're prompted to select your installation directory. I and mean, you can install it wherever you like, but I'm going to accept the defaults. And this screen identifies the components that you're about to install. You do have to install both Virtual Service Catalog and Identity and Access Manager, so on this step you can just click Next. And here you have a decision to make. Do you want to use an embedded database or an external database? We recommend using an external database, and you can select the type of database that you want to use. And once you select the database type, you can then enter the details for your database, the host, the port, and so on. And once you enter that information, you click Validate, to confirm your connection to the database. For this example, I'm going to keep it simple, and I'm going to stick with the embedded database. Now the next step is Windows specific, so it doesn't show up for other operating systems, but if you're on a Windows machine, you can choose whether to create a start menu folder. And you can name it whatever you want, and you can also indicate whether these shortcuts are created for all users. Now, regardless of which operating system you're using, the next step lets you choose whether you want to create desktop icons. I'm going to leave that selected. And that's pretty much it. Virtual Service Catalog and Identity and Access Manager are now being installed, and we'll just wait a minute for that to complete. After the install, there's some important information here that you can read through, and then click Next and then click Finish to complete the install. And now you can see that the installation is complete, my desktop icons were installed, and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start Identity and Access Manager from the desktop icon. You can also launch it from the bin folder of your installation directory. And once that's up and running, I can also start the UI from the desktop icon, or you can just go to a browser and enter the URL directly. Now the first time that you log in, you're going to use the default admin user, which is admin, admin for both the username and password. Later, for security purposes, you're going to want to change this password, but for now we're just going to use admin, admin. Now Identity and Access Manager can be configured to connect to existing LDAP servers, and to do that, just go to User Federation, for this video, I am using an embedded database, so I'm not going to go through these steps, but if you need assistance with that, there's more information in the DevTest DocOps space, 
and I'll show you how to access that toward the end of this video. But for now, let's go ahead and talk about managing users. And to do that, click Users on the left side of the page, and then you can search for a specific user or take a look at all of the defined users. And here you can see a list of all the users created as part of your installation. And as I said earlier, it's a good idea to change the password for the default admin user. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to click the ID of that user and then click the Credentials tab. I'll enter the new password and click Reset Password and then click Change Password. And you can see that the password was reset. And while we're talking about users, I'm going to go ahead and create a new user for Virtual Service Catalog. And to do that, I just click Users again and then Add User. And here, required fields are indicated by a red asterisk. And for this demo, I'm just going to add a name. And by the way, if you ever have any questions about any of these fields, you can just hover over the gray question mark for a quick description of the field. And when you have everything entered, go ahead and click Save. And now you can set the password for the user that you just created from the Credentials tab and click Reset Password and Change Password. And the last step is to assign your user to a permissions group. And you do that through the Groups tab. And there are three groups available. The ACL Admin Group provides admin privileges to Identity and Access Manager. The VSC Admin Group provides admin privileges to Virtual Service Catalog. And VSC User provides user privileges to Virtual Service Catalog. And this last group lets users view the available services, but it prevents them from configuring the Enterprise Dashboard connections. So I'm going to select VSC User and click Join. And you can see that the user was added to the group. So let's go ahead and test out this new user. And to do that, I need to start Virtual Service Catalog. And I'm going to do that from the desktop icon. And once that's up and running, I can also start the UI from the desktop icon, or I can just go to a browser and enter the URL directly. And here I can now log in with the ID that we just created. The ID works, and we know that I've logged in with user permissions, because if I had admin permissions, there would be another option here for configuring dashboard connections. Now this all worked as expected because for this video I've installed everything on my local machine. However, for an enterprise level implementation, there is an additional step. And that step is to configure Virtual Service Catalog to use a non-local instance of Identity and Access Manager. And you do that through the Virtual Service Catalog properties file called vscatalog.vmoptions in the bin folder of your installation directory. And rather than showing you that, I think it might be better to show you where you can find the exact steps and syntax that you need in the doc op space. So to get there, you're just going to click the help icon at the top of the page. And that's going to take you to using Virtual Service Catalog. And in the TOC on the left, below that you can see an article called Configure Virtual Service Catalog. And here you can see the specific information that you need. There are also instructions and another video for configuring enterprise dashboard connections. There's also more information about using Virtual Service Catalog and how to find the specific virtual service that you're looking for. So that was a lot of information thrown at you in a short period of time, but that pretty much wraps up the steps for installing and configuring this feature. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for viewing it. And this concludes installing Virtual Service Catalog.